In this video, we'll be creating the tasks and links to plan the work in our new project. So we'll start by typing into the name column of the table our first task. We'll decide a duration for that activity. And a task shows over here on the bar chart. Now this task can be edited, it can be moved around, or its duration can be edited using the mouse and using these bow and arrow cursors at the start or the finish of the task. Type in our next task. And again, enter a duration for that task. Now I've got a couple of activities already typed out, so I'm just going to copy and paste those into Power Project and enter the durations for these activities. Once we've entered our tasks, we now have to consider the logic, the relationships between them. And in Power Project, we can draw our links simply by placing our cursor at the end of a task. And we see our finish link cursor there. Pulling away from the task, I'm starting to draw a link and I can take that to the start of the successor task. Putting a finish to start relationship between those two tasks. So we position our cursor and we click and drag to draw the link to the next task in our project. We can also draw mid links. So I may decide that one week into the piling activity, that's five days, I'll drag and draw to start the first foundation task. So we're placing our cursor along the bottom of a task without clicking and at the required duration we can click and drag to draw the link to the next activity. And then I'll put a link in there from piling to our ground slab. And when my links are all entered I can press the reschedule button and that will give us a critical path running through our project, calculate the dates for us, and it's also shown me a couple of tasks with float here. So if I just tie up the ends of these tasks, I want to show that the foundations do have a relationship to the ground slab, and we couldn't complete start with that activity unless we would completed the foundations. When I reschedule, you see the float period has been reduced there. So that's showing me if these tasks were to be delayed within the float period, that would not affect my critical path or my end date. But if they were to be delayed past that date, they would become critical and by definition affect the end date of the project. Now I can press undo at the top of the screen to take those changes away and we can undo as many times as we like so that helps us to play around with what if scenarios. We'll now type in some additional tasks into our project and plan the durations for these. So I'm estimating a week there. If I enter eight days, notice that in the table it will round up to one week and three days. So enter in durations in daily or weekly units and when it comes down to watertight and strike scaffold they are going to be milestones so I enter a zero duration. Now to link these tasks to the existing tasks. I'll draw finish to start relationships between these tasks. showing that they should all happen consecutively in the project. When I reschedule, my critical path is shown there. What I also want to do then is I'll maybe move the date of my Windows activity back. So I'll reduce, I'll remove, sorry, this link. I'll delete this link from roof and instead I'll put a link in there from my walls activity. 
but I need to tie in my watertight date to the completion of roof there. So I can now see the critical path running through my project with a few activities showing floats and my end dates have been calculated here.